What is going on Cardano community? Welcome to the Dapp Central YouTube channel. My name is Farid and as always we're breaking down all of the latest news and developments going on in the Cardano ecosystem. The first topic I want to jump into is going to be a pretty brief one, but it's going to be a visualization showing the market ranking for Cardano over time since the bull run, which took place in 2021. Second, I want to jump into a brief update surrounding LenFi, which has chosen to open source its peer to pool smart contracts for the recently rebranded protocol, again, representing um, what was previously known as AADA Finance. Third, I've got an interesting proposal here from Fluid Tokens aiming to unlock a brand new type of rental platform or rental system, I should say, based on smart contracts in the NFT space. If they're able to pull this off, I think this is going to bring a lot of liquidity to their platform. And they're also looking to open source this feature as a part of their catalyst proposal. So if they are able to deliver on this, I think a lot of additional protocols or a lot of other projects will leverage their smart contracts. Now, after that, I've got a brief update surrounding Sunday Swap and what they are going to call Sorbet, which is going to be a wallet impersonator or a wallet troubleshooter. Last but not least, we're going to close out today's video by discussing some updates surrounding Cherry Lend and their testnet release version 1.3 and all the features that it currently provides. Now, if it's your first time stopping by the channel, my goal is to provide you in the community with the latest news tutorials and reviews for the top builders in Cardano. If you'd like to support me on my mission to educate the broader Cardano and crypto community, then consider delegating with the official DAP Central stake pool, which is stake pool ticker DA. PP. As always, I want to say thank you to all of my supporters here, not only within the stake pool, but within the YouTube channel. Jumping over to the first topic for today's video, let's talk about the Cardano market ranking over time. So we have there on the left hand side or the left hand column, the year of 2021 and Q3 was leading into the peak of the bull run, we did see Cardano actually peak out before a lot of other cryptos or a lot of other tokens. And so Q3 is when Cardano um, peaked out. And then Q4 is when we saw things like Bitcoin and Ethereum peak out. Now, beginning in Q1 uh, and all the way through Q4 of 2022 is when we really had the hardest time in terms of the bear market. And then as you guys are probably more than aware, beginning in the opening of 2023 is when we had the rebound from about 16,000 in the terms of value of Bitcoin all the way up to about 30,000, which is where we currently are as a part of Q2 going into Q3, which is now the quarter that we're in. So shout out to Cardano Daily for putting this awesome graphic together. But as we can see here, we had Cardano all the way up to number three as a part of Q3 of 2021. Following that, we had a slight drop off again, given the fact that Cardano did peak out a little bit earlier than some of those other assets. And for those of you who are more than aware or who might not be aware, we did end up finding out that SBF for San Bankman Free did have a pretty heavy hand in pumping up tokens like Solana, which we did see over take Cardano as a part of Q4, which is right here in 2021. Now jumping into 2022, Cardano has been steady at right around the number five spot only behind Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance and XRP, which just won an instrumental lawsuit, basically stating that the sales of XRP on exchanges as well as secondary sales are not deemed as securities. Now, for the majority of 2022, we did stay at that number five spot and we did drop off slightly due to Doge overtaking Cardano, but that has now been undone as a part of Q1 and Q2 of 2023. So let me know what you guys think down below. Can we see Cardano continue to trend upwards, especially in the next bull market? I definitely think so, especially since we have so many new products building and so many new um, ideas coming to fruition on the network. If I get myself off of the way there, you will notice that behind Cardano, we kind of have a growing um, number of protocols just kind of interchanging between themselves. We've got Avalanche, we've got Doge, we've got Polkadot, we've got Matic, and there's a few others here that I don't necessarily recognize. But again, it seems like number one, number two, number three, and number four 
are pretty similar all the way across the board. And then for the majority of the quarters here, we've got Cardano at a uh, relative spot or about number five. So again, very first update here for today's video. Just wanted to show that off and quickly touch on that. The second update I want to jump into as a part of today's video is going to be surrounding LenFi, which has recently rebranded um, to LenFi from AADA Finance. Now, AADA was a lending and borrowing protocol, and so is LenFi. However, AADA Finance only um, launched as a peer-to-peer -peer protocol. So what this meant is that you had to have a third party either approving or denying your loan requests. And that basically introduced a little bit of lag time between when loan requests would come in and when they would get fulfilled. Now, needless to say, AADA did do amazing, and it actually was one of the first DeFi protocols to launch not only on the testnet, but also on the Cardano mainnet. And since rebranding over to LenFi, their goal now is to provide peer to pool lending. Again, this is going to simplify the process, basically removing that time gap between when a loan requester comes onto the platform and when they're actually able to get their loan fulfilled. Because of the lending pools, it, they can come in at any time of the day or night and basically get their loan fulfilled. Now, not only does the pooled approach um, provide loans immediately over to borrowers, it also has an incentive for the loan providers or the liquidity providers as well, given the fact that they are able to earn a yield by providing over their liquidity to their protocol. So a win-win situation. But that necessarily isn't the update that I wanted to share with you guys. What I wanted to really touch on is the fact that the LenFi protocol is being transparent, just like we saw with AADA. And the team has officially published all of the smart contracting code for LenFi on GitHub. So they've left links to both projects, which I have opened up here. And we've got all of the smart contracts, which are written in Icon for LenFi. Again, open source now on GitHub. And then we also have the previously known as AADA Finance smart contract or project, which has been open source for quite a bit of time. Now, one project that I will be talking about here in just a moment, which is going to be Cherry Lend, did actually make a fork of AADA Finance, and they're now building their own protocol, adding and subtracting things as they see fit. And that's really what the point of open sourcing tools is, right? For community members to get access to a set of contracts as well as a entire project that way they don't necessarily have to rebuild or rebuild from scratch and they're able to basically get a head start and then you know either add or remove things as they see fit or as it makes sense for what they're trying to build iterating on the forked version of for example the aada code or the lenfi code so that is the second update that i wanted to share there with you guys again keeping this update relatively brief the next thing I want to jump into is going to be surrounding fluid tokens and a solution to rent NFTs on the Cardano network. Now, before I jump into that particular update, again, because these videos do take a little bit of time, if you guys are enjoying them, I would really appreciate it if you guys could tap that like button. If it's your first time stopping by the channel and you want more content like this, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions for me surrounding Cardano or anything else that we're going to be breaking down as a part of today's video, then as always, go ahead and make sure to leave a comment down below jumping into the update here surrounding fluid tokens it states here that they're going to be aiming to provide a brand new nft renting solution on the cardano mainnet so it reads the wait is finally over introducing fluid share the first decentralized uncollateralized renting solution on cardano and beyond i've just got so many different things to talk about here about this one but i'll try to keep this as brief as i can so Fluid Tokens has recently introduced their pooled lending as well. Again, I think a lot of people and a lot of projects are understanding the benefit of pooled lending. And so you can now go ahead and actually provide liquidity to a Fluid Token pool. And, in, and if you're a borrower, excuse me, you can come directly to the platform and begin to take a loan against your um, collateralized NFT instantly without having to wait for a third party. So a very similar concept to what we're seeing with LenFi. However, Fluid Tokens is introducing this to NFTs as well. And I believe they've also adopted some support for fungible tokens. Now, that aside and focusing on the Fluid Tokens renting solution, this is going to be an uncollateralized renting solution. 
So that means that the borrower or the renter doesn't have to put down any collateral. The first thing that I'm thinking about is when does the actual renter get paid, right? Normally, in order to take out a loan in a peer to peer or maybe in a pooled lending fashion, you have to put down some kind of collateral to ensure that if you don't pay back the loan or if you don't return the NFT, that the loaner or the um, liquidity provider is able to con or to at least get something back from their initial investment. Right. So um, I always recommend and I think it's pretty um, general rule of thumb that if you are providing liquidity, that you should always be taking up more collateral than, than liquidity that you're putting out. That way, if the borrower defaults, you at least have enough to cover your initial investment and your initial liquidity that you provided over. So in this particular instance here, what they're trying to do is unlock new opportunities for NFTs while also ensuring open access to builders. Again, this will be open source while also creating a product that's never been seen before. If I jump over into idea scale or Lido Nation, which I broke down as a part of my video yesterday, we can see that there is an entire proposal. So if you guys want more information surrounding this, definitely make sure to go ahead and jump into idea scale again to check out the proposal. Now, what they're requesting is 200,000 ADA, which is equivalent to about $64,000 in the United States. If I scroll down just a little bit, it states here that our solution enables renting of assets on Cardano without requiring collateral from the renter. It utilizes the staking address of the Cardano blockchain, creating a trustless framework. If I scroll down just a little bit more, I've got one last snippet that I want to read. And it states here that one of the key features that sets aside or that sets this solution aside is the unique capability of the Cardano addresses, which prevent the renter from selling or transferring the rented asset from their wallet. This bolstered security ensures that asset owners can confidently rent out valuable possessions without the fear of losing control or ownership. If this is in fact true, because I'm not a developer, um, I do think this will be a huge innovation on the Cardano blockchain. I know that we have a staking key as well as like a wallet or a payment address, which makes up our entire address. And similar to staking, where you're able to do it in a non-custodial fashion, Imagine being able to do something like this with renting, but with the um, confidence or with the insurance that whoever is renting your asset doesn't actually have the ability to sell that for a profit, right? So again, I think this is a huge opportunity, but one thing that I have not found out about yet is exactly how the renter will get paid, right? Because again, if you're renting something out, normally you know, you would get paid for that at the time that the rent is being made or that the item is being rented out. But in this case, it might be after the fact. But again, I'll be keeping my eye out on this proposal and doing my due diligence to see exactly how this works. Now, one other thing that comes to mind too with this is what happens if the renter does not decide to bring the NFT back? Will the smart contract in place somehow be able to execute on a set number of days to actually return that um, NFT back over to the owner? And if they're aiming to do something like that, what if there's not enough funds within the wallet to actually send things back so there's just so many different questions that you guys can ask and that i can ask about this particular proposal but this is the 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 idea behind project catalyst right for us to become more educated for builders to provide ideas surrounding things that might be innovative and things that might not have been done before so i'm definitely backing this one again i'm going to do my best to read more about it but if this team is able to execute on this, I think this opens up a huge amount of ideas and a lot of innovation for the entire Cardano community. The next update I want to jump into is going to be surrounding Sunday Swap. Now, Sunday Swap was the very first AMM style DEX building on Cardano launching in the month of January of 2022, almost taking down the Cardano blockchain. I definitely remember that particular two, two weeks where the Cardano blockchain load was somewhere around 95 to 98% for like almost an entire month, right? It was a really interesting time. And again, there just was almost nothing being built on Cardano aside from MuesliSwap. And we now have grown so much since. And that's almost been, what, two years now. So interesting, interesting times. But jumping back into the point here for today's video, what I wanted to share is that the Sunday Swap team is going to be showcasing one of their internal developer tools called Sorbet. I know some people within the United States might 
pronounce this as sherbet, but I'll just stick with the French pronunciation for now, which is sorbet. Now you can think of sorbet as a wallet impersonator without actually accessing the keys to any specific wallet. And sorbet allows developers to see what end users are experiencing. So interesting product here. Again, they are going to be leveraging Project Catalyst for their funding. And so I'm, I'm wondering when it comes to Sorbet as well as the renting tool for Fluid Tokens, you know, will these teams still be able to deliver a product without Project Catalyst? If so, that's great. But if they can potentially remove that financial burden by leveraging Catalyst, then obviously, okay, you know, that's great for them as well. But ideally, it would be nice to see these teams or these products still come to fruition with or without Project Catalyst. But um, realistically speaking, I can definitely understand that we are in a bear market and that some of these projects may not have the funds to actually develop this without any additional help from Project Catalyst. Now, some of the um, tidbits here surrounding Sorbet, which is going to be a streamlining application for troubleshooting and enhancing the user experience on Cardano. It's going to be providing enhanced adapt quality it's also going to be boosting efficiency and saving time and resources while also cutting costs and providing the ability for developers to quickly learn and innovate on their existing solutions. If I jump over onto idea scale again, we can see that this is going to be done by the Sunday Swap team. And we've got Pi Lanningham, who I believe is the founder, as well as Artem Wright. Again, they're going to be asking for the same amount as the Fluid Tokens team, which is going to be 200,000 ADA or about $64,000 US. It states here in their brief summarization of the solution that Sorbet is a Chrome extension allowing Cardano dApp developers and support teams to browse dApps as if they were a specific user, aiding efficient issue diagnosis and enhancing users' experience. If you've ever had some issues with the wallet, which I'm sure that we all have, imagine a developer being able to get access to Sorbet and being able to mimic exactly what you experienced in little to no effort. That's where the benefit and the use case for a tool like this comes in. So that is going to wrap it up there for Sorbet, again, being developed by the Sunday Swap team. The very last story I've got here for you guys as a part of today's Cardano Scoop is going to be surrounding Cherry Lend. So this team released their testnet on July 10th, and they've iterated twice already, and they're going to be releasing a third iteration. So it states your testnet v 1.3 is now live, and this update includes automatic wallet connection, the ability to create loan requests with ADA, and several additional UI fixes. I mentioned this before, but they did also leave a link to a doc or to a GitHub documentation platform where you can basically find out how to load up your wallet, how to connect to the DAP, and how to begin either providing liquidity or making loan requests. That said, again, I mentioned this before, but this is going to be using a forked version of the AADA finance code, which again is showing the use cases of open sourcing technology here within the Cardano ecosystem. It took AADA finance months to get up and running, but the Cherryland team was able to do that in just a fraction of the time. I believe that is going to bring us to a close here for today's Cardano scoop, breaking down the market ranking for Cardano since Q1 of 2021, LenFi open sourcing their peer to pool smart contracts, Fluid Token potentially bringing on an NFT renting solution on the Cardano main net, as well as Sunday Swap and their Sorbet troubleshooter. And then we just closed out today's video by chatting about Cherry Lend. As always, if you found this video to be helpful or insightful in any way, shape, or form, I would really appreciate it if you guys could tap that like button. If it's your first time stopping by the channel and you want more content like this, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions for me surrounding Cardano or any other projects that we talked about in today's video, then please make sure to go ahead and leave a comment down below. That's it. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video.